It's a new year with Barb from Dover Apothecary. 2023 is here. Uh, Barb, let's talk about response and reaction. Your article on this month's hub. I loved it. I, you know, it really got me thinking again. And I want you to share it with uh, with the audience. And let's talk a bit about it because there's so many different areas you and I want to go into on this subject. So uh, fire away. Tell me, tell me the background on this story. Welcome to 2023, everybody. And uh, it it just was an event that. Um, simple act of driving back with the car from some work and observing this young woman with her shopping cart and her bicycle uh, on Fridays, which are our garbage and recycling day. And she's going from bin to bin and collecting bottles and things like that. And I just thought, wow, you know, the the weather, it, it was a sleety day. It wasn't a, a, a great day. And I'm thinking about the upcoming weather that we experienced through our winter months and, and just kind of got me wondering about, does she have enough? Does she have enough food for the day? Does she have enough, you know, to keep her warm, to, to keep her going? Because you don't know what her, her overall story is. So I got back and I pulled into the garage and... <clears throat> She was getting a little closer to our place by this point, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go in and grab some food food for her. And uh, so ran in, and I grabbed some tuna, and I grabbed some beans and, and things like that, some fresh apples, and I went out, and I stood on the lawn. And her cart was parked basically in front, but I didn't want to intrude on her property. And so I just stood there and she, at this point she was across at a neighbor's bin and she turned and she saw me standing on the lawn with these things in my, my hands. And, and I was so confused, Dave. I was absolutely like, didn't understand the reaction because she stood in the middle of the road for a moment and she brought her arm up and she turned her shoulder to me and she brought her shawl over her head to protect herself. And I'm like, I, I just, it, it just stopped me in my tracks because all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, she thinks I'm going to throw these things at her. And I just, it, it just wrenched my heart to think that that is probably a common occurrence for her, that she's treated with less dignity than a stray dog, that she expects people to treat her that way. And I just, it just hurt my heart so much to think. And so we just both kind of stood there and then she brought the shawl down just enough that she could peek at me. And I just said, it's okay. I just have some food for you. If you're hungry, can I put it in your cart? And she said, yes. So I went over and and I placed the things in her cart and I backed away. And as she came closer, I said, do you need a blanket or anything like that? And she said, yes, thank you. And so I went in and I got her a blanket and I could hear the the recycling trucks coming and I could see that was making her agitated. And I said, your stuff's fine here. You go do what you have to do and I'll bring the blanket and put it in your cart if that's okay. And so off she went. And I went in and I got a garbage bag and I got a towel and a washcloth and some soap and some lotion and a blanket. And I put that and some extra garbage bags out and I I just went out and, and put them in her cart. And, you know, kind of a, a bless and release because I don't know her story. And I think one of the reasons that it affected me on such a deep level, and I talk about that in the article, is that our family went through a period of really hard times for four years and the only and that's when our children were small and the only thing that kept us from being in a a dire situation was family and friends so and we always had that to hang on to that was always our worst case scenario is that we would have to swallow our pride and move in with either one of our sets of parents for a little while until we could get back on our feet was a failed business but the house was attached and the whole thing just snowballed out of control when we couldn't sell the property and so you know that was our story but those were our resources I don't know what her story is I don't know you know but just it just it was something that I really wanted to share with our readers and with our community to really 
start to maybe look at things a little bit differently. It's it's easy to be afraid of things that we don't understand and people that we don't understand. But I think there is a large, large component of these people that probably have some sort of a mental illness um, on top of the lack of resources. And I think this is something we need to look at in our communities and figure out how we can be doing more. I agree 100%. And I think, you know, what you said about just the, the other the other person being a little intimidated or afraid, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's typical. I mean, yeah. we kind of all do that when we see someone maybe we're a little skeptical of and we sort of back away. We all do it. Yeah. And you yeah. know what I mean? It's our way of sort of protecting ourselves, I, I guess. Um, we don't look enough at folks that are struggling, and especially with what we've come through in the last three or four years, it's kind of important that we understand that. I mean, I've been to different places in the Simcoe area where, you know, where there's a free luncheon, and you'll see the amount of people that are going there is incredible. Like, it, it, it talks a little bit about our society and about what's going on. And raising awareness is such a positive thing. And and you and I both off air brought up places in Simcoe now that are sort of yeah. helping in that. And it's awesome. It's That's what we need to do. But on a general day-to-day basis, I think what we need as a society, as a whole country, as a world, is to be a little more empathetic and understand, yeah. you know, that not everybody's going to be as lucky or have those opportunities. And we got to sort of help them create their own opportunities as well so that they can step, right. step up to a different level that they want to get to or achieve. And, and sometimes people, I know this is kind of, and I'm, I'm not trying to be, you know, mean or anything, but sometimes people want to have that existence in that way. Maybe they're running from something that we don't understand. Right. And maybe that's their way of coping. Uh, you know, and I often think about that too. It's like, okay, what what is the right way to try and help? You know what I mean? Like like what you did, you were very forthright and you were just food and shelter, food and warmth is obviously the first two things everybody needs. Right, so that right. I think is very simple and straightforward in how people can help um, when they see folks like that, when, when we see yeah. folks that are struggling with uh, their lives. Um, and your emotional connection that you made I mean, obviously, there was a reason for that to happen at that time in front of your place. There was a yeah. reason you came home then, and and all that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Is it something that we, you do think it, it kind of goes back to our childhood? Maybe we 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 see those things as we grow up, and they just become commonplace, and we kind of forget that we got to help. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's difficult because you know we're we're taught different things perhaps within our our family units and and we have these preconceptions because of those things that we have learned but sometimes we need to unlearn and to be able to observe without judgment and you know to myself that felt like so little to do for this young woman but she didn't ask for for my assistance. She didn't approach me or in any way. I I mean, she was incredibly orderly. She didn't make a mess when she's going, like she was a very respectful woman, but for whatever reason, she's in this situation with weather coming in and she's going to be like, like so many other people. So, I mean, I know that I grew up in a household that would have looked away. I don't know why I'm geared the way that I am, you know, it's, and it isn't that my parents weren't caring people. They were incredibly loving and, and welcoming, but there would have been a real bias about how that person got to be in the situation that they're in. The assumption would be that it, oh, it has to be some sort of a substance abuse. And, you know, so it's, it's just, to be able to observe observe something without that judgment and to make a decision that you have an opportunity to do a little something to help. We have to be careful because if it's not asked for, if it hasn't been, and like you said so clearly, like some of these people really do 
maybe they're happier than a lot of us with, with all our material trappings and, and things like that. Maybe they're not unhappy, but their basic needs for survival are just that at this time of year in this area of the world. I think that we need to be a little more caring and empathetic about what we have an abundance of that we can share if we see somebody in a situation like this. You mentioned, and I'm going to elaborate a bit more on it, was the uh, mental health aspect <clears throat> in this country. I mean, it's, I mean, after the pandemic, the anxiety, the depression, all yeah. those um, areas talking to CMHA, my friends there, yeah. they're overwhelmed. They're inundated. Oh, gosh, we need yeah. to invest in uh, the folks uh, in, in our communities and, and help. We need more uh, specialists in that area, obviously, to help because they can't keep up. And no. as a society, maybe there's, like you said, maybe if we all just reach out a little bit more and try and help, mm -hmm. we can sort of bend that curve and get folks uh, back where they where they want to be or what they want to be doing. Um, the mental yeah. health aspect to me is just, I mean, that's a number one. I think that's probably in a majority of cases, the first thing that has to be addressed. Obviously you want food and warmth, but yeah. we've got to find a way to sort of interject that and help these folks yeah. Uh, find a way yeah. to, 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 to get their lives. Again, I'm going to say it where they want to be, not what we think mm -hmm. they should be, but where they need to be or they want to go. I think that's, yeah. I, and you brought up another point that I don't think we talk about enough. A young lady, mm -hmm. you know, there's this stigma that goes with older folks that, you know, who are down in the dumps, you know, you, you see the old guy, that's the perception yeah. I think that a lot of people still have. And I remember, again, talking back to this spot where I, I saw where they offered free meals. And they talked at that time, and this is probably 10 years ago, about how many young people were coming in and didn't have food. Mm -hmm. And right then and there, you're like, oh, okay, so this is not, yeah. you know, it, it, it flips the whole category, right? And it, it and does. It changes it does. everything, the way you look at it. And it could be something to do, in some cases, with addiction. It could be the mental health aspect, there's so many different things that it could be, right? Oh, completely, completely. And because there, you know, there are so many young people that have been born to an addicted parent. Yeah, yeah, so, I never even thought, yeah, that's a good point. When you look at that aspect of it and you take the judgment out of it, it's like, well, we know what addiction does to the brain and we know that how hard it is to to give these things up in in a situation where we have all the support and love in the world but for somebody that is on their own for whatever reasons it's it's an entirely different situation and um you know but yeah i mean she was she was the same age as my kids probably and and to think that you know she's out there and Again, I don't know her story. I haven't seen her since. You yeah, know? and it's not it's not random. It's it's all across the country. It's in every community. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's the other part that we're kind of missing here is you, you you know it's not just your little corner of the world. It's happening everywhere. Um, I the only way I know how to wrap up this show is to maybe suggest to people that if they want to help, get in touch and volunteer, like the Salvation Armies or any other organization that helps, uh, you know, even if you spend a couple hours working in a kitchen to help yep. feed folks or something, I think that's the part that we all need to get back to a little bit and, you know, give a little bit more of our time back. I mean, we're yes. not, we're not all blessed financially to be able mm -hmm. to help everybody, but we can have our time and we yeah. can spend time, you know, even a little conversation with folks. And that's, yeah. that's the, uh, the, the other part of it. And, uh, you know, and, and people, and I'm going to rant on here a little bit more, people that are on disability. Yeah. A lot of those folks, too, they don't get nearly enough to survive. So no. at some point, they're looking for opportunities to sort of help themselves out. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the other part of this, too, that we forget. It's like we're not really taking care of the folks we should be. So We're not. You know, we're not. My my daughter in law is is a social worker, and she is one amazing human being. But it, we hear about all these programs that are out there that there are going to be in place in twenty twenty five or or whatever. And and she said the need is just 
you know, up. these people are, are yeah. barely making it and yeah. it just, we have to do better. We have to, you know, we waste a lot in our society um, and we can be doing so much more with that. Uh, you know, most communities do have a food bank of some sort uh, and, and women's shelters or this shelter or that. Um, and yeah, just to just looking at, and it's hard because right now I think people are, are feeling a bit of a pinch with, you know, interest exactly. rates and, and everything else. And I know for myself, it was, it was kind of like a post-traumatic stress disorder kind of thing when, when financially things started to, to change a little bit because it took me right back to that four year period yeah. of, you know, scratching and, and being resourceful in, in every kind of way to keep our kids fed and clothed. And it, it just, that insecurity aspect was just like right in front of my face again. It's like, okay, bring it down a notch. What's the truth here? What's, what's your reality? And, and just, you know, sort of regrounding in the situation. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just I think we we have a lot to give and and if all you have to give is a smile and a hi just to indicate that you recognize that as another human being that's huge. I agree. That might be the nicest thing somebody can do for that person in that day, but we we definitely can do better. You got to remember too the, the bottom line is survival for these folks. Yeah. It's just, it's not about what next week brings. It's about yeah. what tonight or tomorrow morning brings. No. And I think, you know, they're living basically day to day, hour to hour. And mm -hmm. that boils back to your most common instinct. You want to yeah. find food for lunch, you know, or have that, you know, have something to eat or drink mm -hmm. at some point yeah. and be warm. So, yeah, I mean, anything folks you, out there that you can do this, I mean, it's a 2023 topic that, you know, starting, you know, this is our January show, but I mean, this is a topic that's yeah. been ongoing for decades, millennium, hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing new, but if each and every one of us can actually just take the time to, like you said, it's as simple as saying hi, or it's as simple as a can of food to the food bank, or just doing a little bit. If we all just try and do a little bit more, maybe that impact will help a lot. Well, it will, it'll help a lot more folks. Yeah. And, and I know I'll just touch briefly on, a few people had said to me, well, aren't you afraid that she's going to come back and ask for more mm -hmm. or that she'll bring other people with her that are looking for handouts? And not for a split second does that interfere with me wanting to help <laughs> because, number one, she's not going to put the kindness of a stranger at risk by doing that. But she didn't ask for the handout in the first place, right? Like I asked, she said yes. So there was permission given there, but that's, and, and, you know, you don't have to give people cash, but right. you can ask if they yeah. need clothing or a blanket or food. And it, that kindness could entirely change the course of their day, the course of their life, just to know that they've been treated as a fellow human being. So, you know, it's community yeah. awareness. Yep. Like that's all you're saying. You're not, you know, we're not trying to reiterate the book folks. And I think yeah. if someone said that to me, it's like, well, aren't you afraid Then I'd be like, well, it seems like you're more afraid than I am. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just, that's, we all should be helping where we can. Yeah. And I don't think I agree with you. I think it's just, uh, you know what? Um, just do a little bit. That's all we're saying, folks. Just do a little mm -hmm. bit. Start 2023 right. Do a little bit. Help someone else. Uh, it can be family. It can be friends. It can be yeah. like a complete stranger. But just do your part. That's all we're saying now. And I think that's a really good message to send to start 2023. You got to get on that right track a little bit, folks, and, uh, and yeah. help others. Yeah. Let's start close to home. And make exactly. a difference where we can see it. And uh, yeah, we, we you, have it in us. So, and you see the big rush in at Christmas and all that to 
fill the food banks. But again, it's January. Food banks still need to be filled, right? So we yeah. got to keep remembering to do those things yes. as yeah. a community. It's not just once a year, it's all year long. Thanks for doing this okay. today, Barb. Read Barb's oh, piece of the January you. Hub. It's a great piece. Thanks. I know it's we're a little okay. off the health topic, but I, it is really, it's it's about mental health it's and it's a about different type of physical health, health and it's about. Yep. Yep. For sure. Exactly. All right. And, uh, and uh, we're not preaching, folks. Well, we're just saying, get out there and give a hand. Mm -hmm. Take care. Yes, Barb. you too. Thanks, Dave.